Hi there, this is Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and I am going to demonstrate how to paint this rainbow painting on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylics. And we are gonna go ahead and get started right away here. All the materials and colors are in the description of this painting. So I am laying out the, I'm measuring three inches from the bottom of the canvas because I'm gonna make a horizontal line across the canvas. And that line is going to divide where our water is. So we have this, this lot, land, we have this grassy area, and then we have this water area. So that line is where our water area is. And then the second line I'm gonna do is about two inches above the first line. And that line is gonna be where our grassy area is. So measure about two inches, it doesn't have to be exact. And then use the same thing. I use the T-square ruler to line up with the edge of the canvas to do a horizontal line across the painting. So there's my second line and that area is gonna be where the grass is. So we're gonna go ahead and start above those lines. We're gonna paint the entire sky area with two colors. I'm gonna load my palette with light blue permanent. This is the Artist's Loft light blue permanent. If you're using the Liquitex Basics, it's the um, pretty much the same color. And then that's the Artist's Loft titanium white. So white and light blue. And I'll be using my three quarter inch flat wash brush. I link the brushes that I use in the description. So we're gonna load our brush in the water and I'm just gonna tap it off a little bit. I wanna use the water that's on my brush to kind of thin this paint down, but not too much. Um, so you don't wanna get too much water in there, just enough to thin it down slightly. And that's gonna help get the colors to flow nice when you start applying the color. And also we have a big area to fill up too. So we're gonna start at the top and I'm gonna use the full width of my brush to paint left and right horizontal strokes all the way across the canvas. And I'm just gonna continue with that light blue about halfway down and then I'm gonna start adding that white in there. We wanna kind of do a, a blend of the light blue to the white. So in the sky, usually the color is lighter, closer to the ground, the horizon line. So we just wanna kind of do that concept here. So the light blue is going to eventually blend down to a, a much lighter blue with that white. I'm just gonna keep painting left and right strokes. If you need the color to flow a little bit better, you can add just a bit of water to your brush, but you don't want too much to where it's dripping down. And so about right here is where I'm gonna start adding that white. Uh, when I transition to the white, I did not rinse my brush off. In fact, that helps with the blending because I still have that light blue on my brush. So a little bit of white on your brush and gently blend that white kind of back up into the sky. Now I'm not gonna do a uh, perfect blend of that light blue to the white. I kind of want the light, the, the white, to kind of streak across the canvas, if that makes sense. Um, we still want it to be super light blue, so it shouldn't turn all the way white, as white as the canvas. Um, so right here, I even grabbed a little bit more of that light blue permanent, and I kind of added it into there. So we kind of have um, some streaks of white in the sky, and I'm just blending it back up into the sky. And you're just gonna take that concept of the white and the light blue and go all the way down to that horizon line. I'm speeding this video up just a bit here, but press pause when you need to and take your time to fill up the rest of the area. You wanna just make sure you go all the way down to that line and it should be super light there on the bottom, but not all the way pure white. Next, we're going to apply the 
base color of that grassy area. This is the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. It's kind of a darker green color. I'm gonna rinse off my three quarter flat brush and I'm going to just go ahead and paint. So that grassy area, um, the two between the two lines that we drew, we're gonna just fill that in solid with the green and we're not going to do any grass texture yet. This is just gonna be the base color of that area. And I'm just gonna apply in an even coat of that green. Um, you may not get full coverage yet and that's fine because this is just the first layer. So if you're seeing that canvas show through right here, that is okay. We're just gonna um, do a nice even layer and even if it goes, um, if it's kind of uneven above the horizon line, that's fine. Just try to get it kind of straight, as straight as possible right here where the water is. And just go ahead and fill that area in. If you're doing this on a stretched canvas with the sides, you can extend that green on the sides. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that here because I have a whole bunch of leftover green, um, but I didn't extend the blue, but I can always do that later. So I just take that color and I just paint the sides and usually I don't do too much detail on the sides, just extend the main color. And so then we are going to apply the base layer of the water next and for the water, I used the color turquoise blue. So this is a Liquitex Basics color. It's one of their new colors. They recently came up, came out with a few new colors for the Basics brand of paint. And um, this is kind of like a darker turquoise. And if you don't have this color, you can use like a phthalo green color and add a little bit of um, the bright aqua green into it to make it look more like turquoise. Or you could even just use like a ultramarine blue. So I'm just gonna take this color and kind of do left and right strokes again, fill the area in. But I wanna add a little bit of white in there. I don't wanna have it be all solid turquoise blue. So without filling it in all the way, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my brush and just kind of blend it in there. Um, just randomly let that white blend with their turquoise. Doesn't really have to um, fade or blend perfectly, but just gives it some color variation in that area and also lightens it up a bit. We will not do water texture until closer to the end of the painting. And if you're going to paint the sides, you can go ahead and extend that turquoise color on the sides of your canvas. And then, so when you're done with the sky, the ground, and the water, you will have to either take a break to let this all dry, or if you're not ready to take a break, you can get a blow dryer and you can use that to dry the entire painting. So it's gotta be dry all the way before we can go ahead and do the next step. The next step we're going to do is apply this grass texture and I will be doing the grass texture with this 3 8 inch angle brush. So these angle brushes are nice to apply for applying grass texture because of the um, the way the brush is situated. So you hold it so that the bigger point is kind of facing down and you're just gonna start from the bottom of each grass blade and kind of flick your brush up. But if you don't like the angle brush, you can use a round brush or even a little flat brush. This is that a 10 shader brush that I'll be using later in the painting. So whatever brush you feel comfortable with, it just needs to have a thin sort of, the bristles need to be thin enough to create the grass blade. And as far as the colors go, we are gonna start out with the lighter green. Um, I loaded two light green colors on my palette. You can use both or one or the other. So one of, is, one of them is brilliant yellow green and the other one is light olive green. And then um, titanium white, freshen that up if you need to freshen that color up. And what I like to do before I do these thin strokes is load my brush in the water but pinch it with my fingers so those bristles are nice and gathered together and are you can see when we're going to do this stroke it's going to allow us to create those thin strokes and i'm just going to go ahead and load my brush in white and green so that's that light olive green and the white and um, i blended that together on my palette but i'm just going to take that the 
brush and start at the bottom for each grass blade. And I'm just gonna take that, um, the, the top point of the brush is facing down and I'm just flicking the brush up to create these thin strokes and they're going at different angles and they're overlapping each other. So some of them are going vertical, some are going angular to the left, some are going angular to the right, and they're just slightly all overlapping each other to create the grass blade. And notice that I started way in the back. So we're actually going to have all our lighter grass blades be way in the back, um, kind of along the horizon line, and they're actually crossing over that horizon line right there. And we're gonna do um, different rows of grass blades and work our way down. So it, this step is, um, it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of time to do. So just kind of be patient with it. And you can just kind of zen out to that. If you're using both of those lighter green colors, you can um, kind of vary your colors here. So notice how I'm just kind of loading my brush in different amounts of the light olive green. Then I'll grab some brilliant yellow green, a little bit of white. And just so the colors just kind of um, have different tints to it because of the white kind of some blades are lighter, some are slightly darker. And also it's gonna make our painting grass area look like there's some depth in it because things that are further in the distance are lighter, things that are closer to the ground are darker. So that's gonna give us some natural um, perspective in this. So I'm just gonna continue adding more layers of grass blades and then I can go on to the next row. So I'm going to load my brush in a little bit of the hooker's green hue, but still mix some white in the lighter green into it. Um, and it might get kind of tricky here because the base layer that we have is already a darker green. So when we start adding these darker greens in here, it's gonna, might be kind of tricky to get it to show up, but make sure you're mixing that darker green with kind of a lighter green color in there. And just so it's a different shade of green than the base color, it should be able to show up. And as I'm adding this second row of grass blades, I'm still doing the exact same technique, um, but it's overlapping the first row of grass blades that I created. And I'm just gonna continue to do that same kind of stroke. You're going to find that because of how tedious this can be, filling up all those grass blades, that your stroke may not be as precise as the first row of strokes that you did, and that's okay. In fact, I think that the more messier it looks, the more um, character it gives that area, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm getting kind of sloppy with my strokes here. I'm just kind of doing it a little bit fast and I'm just getting my strokes going in all different directions and I'm kind of playing around with it and having fun. So you can have lighter grass colors. You can grab a little bit of the lighter green and the white in there on your palette and add those colors. They'll overlap each other and blend and kind of mix and make all kinds of new different shades of grass. The thing is that we're just creating a textured area so it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have it go wide in all different directions but to create the effect I guess the rule would be because we started in the back and we're working our way down and each row is overlapping the previous row so that just makes it look like the grass has depth and dimension in that area and um, just gradually letting my grass get darker and darker as I work down. In a little bit here, we'll be adding some Mars black to the palette. So we'll even introduce a, um, a new shade of green in there because we have a darker shadowy area kind of right here on the bottom where the grassy area meets the water. So I'm just gonna go down with the, that darker green all the way to the, um, the bottom area. And um, I can add some lighter grass tones or uh, grass blades in there and if you need to go back and work some areas in the back you can just make sure you kind of go back over those grass blades and overlap those grass blades as well and then so here's my Mars black and so when we're making a super dark green you only need a little bit of black in that green you don't want to mix too much into it because then it's just going to turn black um, so um, you'll need a whole big chunk of green, little bit of the black. It's gonna turn into a darker green color. And we're just gonna take that and we're gonna add those darker grass blades right there on the bottom area. 
And if you want to add a few darker blades kind of throughout the, the whole land area, you can if you wanted to get creative with that. But I'm just kind of emphasizing the fact that the grass is super dark in this area. I'm going to go silent here for just a bit while I finish this step and I'll let you know if anything important comes up here. So right here on the bottom, kind of along, I guess that's the bank where the uh, grass meets the water. I'm doing little tiny strokes of the darker green black color down in that area to kind of um, define that line that divides the grass and the water. So um, not a, a straight line, just a tiny little stroke that goes across that area. So I'm just taking the tip of the brush hair and just kind of dabbing it to create that little darker area along the bank of the water and the grass. And so what we're going to do next is draw the tree. And I recommend drawing this with chalk first just because it's a kind of a unique shaped tree unless you feel super confident with painting it in right away. But our tree starts out kind of wide at the bottom, so it kind of trumpets where the roots of the tree are. And then our tree gets thin very fast and it kind of sways to the left and curves. So we have this very large branch that goes off to the right. And then we have these kind of these twisty looking branches. So I'm just taking that chalk and sketching it out and chalk will erase with the water on the canvas. And I'm forming the shape of the um, sort of roots that kind of go down and some of the roots may kind of go into the water. And I'm gonna draw a few of the branches, although when I paint this in, I'm going to paint more branches so I don't have to draw all my branches in, just the main branches so that I can have, so I have three main branches and two of them kind of have smaller branches already. But I am going to go ahead and paint this tree in using a number eight round brush dipped in water. And I have on my palette the color raw umber. So raw umber is a very, very dark brown, it almost looks black. But this darker color is going to be our base color for the tree and we'll be able to add some highlights later. So I'm just taking that raw umber color and painting it in. And the nice thing about using this round brush is I can press hard. So when you press hard on the brush using all the bristles, you get your thicker stroke. But this brush is really nice because I can use the tip of the brush to get my thinner strokes in there as well. So on the, the main part of the trunk, I'm pressing all the way on the bristles. Right here on the edge, I made the, uh, the edges a little bit bumpy and that's going to help with that texture of the twisty tree later. So it's not a smooth straight edge, it's got some bumps along the side. And right here we got our thinner branches. So for those thin branches, you wanna just use the tip of that brush right there. And sometimes it helps to twist the brush when you kind of twist it as you're painting, it creates a thinner stroke. And oftentimes when you're loading the paint, it helps to twist the brush as well. And that gets the paint right there towards the tip of the bristles. And I usually don't follow my chalk drawing verbatim. I usually use just the chalk drawing as a guide and um, kind of go in a different direction with these branches. And that's okay, our chalk can erase later. But these branches right here are gonna go all the way to a very fine, thin point. And then I'm going to do pretty much the same thing down here with the roots. Our roots are just like branches, only they're living in the grassy area. So I'm just going to kind of decide where my roots are going to be. Again, thinner. Um, to create that thinner stroke, you're using more of the tip of the bristles and not necessarily the full amount of pressure on the brush and you're loading the brush, just the tip of the bristle, the point of the, the bristles with the paint. And we can have some of our 
roots, I keep wanting to call them branches, the roots go down into the water. And um, if you need help with the flow, you can add a bit of water to the brush and kind of distribute it and twist it into the paint. Before this dries, I'm going to go ahead and add some lighter colors into the tree. I'm going to load some titanium white on my palette and I didn't rinse my brush so I still had some of that raw umber and I'm basically mixing raw umber and white together. It creates this really light pretty ash color and I'm just going to take that and on the right side of the tree I'm just going to kind of add this sort of very uneven wavy sort of line on the tree and you can see already how it's creating that texture in the tree and I can lighten up some more areas and I'm doing these wavy lines and that'll create the illusion that our tree is kind of twisty and all, all I'm doing is painting these long wavy lines down the tree down the trunk of the tree and those lines can overlap each other and just using different variations of that white. I'm loading just a teeny bit of white on the tip of my brush. It blends with the brown and it creates those lighter colors in there. I can have those wavy lines go down into the roots. And this root right here, I can have that root look like it's kind of overlapping the tree just by creating that stroke on the bottom. And later on, we'll add even um, some more different shades of brown in there, but this is just going to kind of set the groundwork for our twisty texture tree that we're creating here. And I'll have some of those lighter colors go up into the smaller branches as well. But we don't want to, or I don't want to do too much detail up in this area because I know there's going to be leaves sort of covering a lot of those branches anyway. And I'm just going back, doing some more twisty strokes in there. Next, we are going to do the fun part of this painting, which is the ultimate goal was to paint a rainbow, right? And I'm going to show you the steps that I took for painting this rainbow. There's a lot of steps involved with this rainbow, so prepare yourself. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is get my three quarter wash brush and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and dry because I'm gonna do a dry brush technique and a dry brush doesn't work when the brush is wet. So I dried it off with the towel, wiped it off on my wrist to make sure it's super dry. I'm gonna load the white. So I'm, I'm going to do a dry brush um, I'm going to paint a, a white rainbow essentially first, but this is going to set sort of the, the base work for the color. So it's going to have a dry brush um, layer, but um, really quick here, switching gears here, but I'm going to use chalk to draw my rainbow and you don't have to do this. If you're feeling super confident and you want to just paint it in, you can, but the chalk helps to kind of get a vision of, so this rainbow is a very big piece of the painting. So I just want to make sure that we have the sizing, right? Um, but I positioned mine about three fingers away from the base of the tree and the width of the rainbow is about four fingers wide, although I ended up painting it, um, it wasn't this wide in the end. So four fingers was too wide for me and I had to fix it later. Um, so maybe like three fingers wide, unless you want it that wider, but um, just kind of estimate how wide your <laughs> rainbow is gonna be. And I'm just gonna take my white, titanium white paint and dry brush this in. So this is my white rainbow I'm painting and this white is going to allow our rainbow to be super bright in this um, area. And I don't have to fill the entire area in with white, so it doesn't have to be solid, but it does have to be noticeable. So um, it's see-through, it just, um, some streaks of white in there and that's gonna kind of set the base for our bright rainbow here. You can use the tip of the brush to define the shape of the rainbow or you can use the full width all throughout. But like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% solid. When you have that dry brush layer in, you wanna find yourself a small flat brush. So this, it's labeled as a number 10 shader brush. It's not a brush I usually use for my tutorials, but I grabbed it because I liked the width of it. It's about 3 8 
inch of a width wide. So you can get a quarter inch flat brush, a half inch flat brush, something similar to that size. And the reason why I'm using that size is because that's going to be the width of each of the bows of each of the color bands of the rainbow. And I'm starting with the color cadmium red medium and um, primary yellow in a little bit. But this, you can use any red. You, it doesn't have to be cad red, but this is just the red that I grabbed. And our rainbow beam is going to be that width, and it's also dry brush style. So with the rainbow, we would see through some of the blue sky through the color. It's translucent. It's not opaque and 100% 100 solid. So right here, I added a little bit of white to my brush and you don't have to do this, but I liked the effect it gave. It kind of lightened up some areas of that red so it's not solid all throughout and it kind of made it look like it was sort of fading away. But we, like I said, we don't want to make it all the way solid. So you want to make sure you have a towel on hand to wipe your brush off after you load it with the paint and that'll create the dry brush effect style that we did with that white layer. And for the orange, um, I'm going to make orange. So this is primary yellow and I'm just going to mix a little bit of red with the yellow. So when you make orange, you, you technically need more yellow than red to make that orange that we are used to um, seeing. Um, so a lot, I would say three to one proportions of yellow to red and just make the orange on your palette and wipe the brush off with a towel or wipe it off on your palette and then do your stroke. Be very, very light handed with these. Um, again, we don't want it to be solid and we can have that go right there up next to the red. In fact, it slightly overlaps that red and when you slightly overlap it, it kind of makes it look like it's sort of fading into each other. Um, and then you can have your stroke. I actually liked how it kind of faded up in the upper right hand corner. You can see the color kind of ran out over there. And instead of going back and reloading my brush up in that area, I kind of left it because it looked like the rainbow was fading away at that area. And then I'm doing the white paint thing as well. Just adding a teeny bit of white to my brush and just adding a few strokes of white in there kind of brightens up some area of that rainbow. And then when you go on to the next color, you're going to want to rinse your brush because this time you want the yellow without the orange. So we're going to rinse, dry, and we're gonna load it into the primary yellow color. So load it, wipe it off with the towel or wipe it off on your palette so there's only a little bit of paint on your brush and go ahead and do your next rainbow beam. So each rainbow beam is the width of the brush. So I'm using the full width of the brush to create that um, thickness of the the band of that color. And again, that yellow can slightly overlap that orange and it can fade out. And if you want to add a little bit of white in there, you can. And I didn't have my rainbow touch the grass. I knew I was going to paint the little cauldron, the pot at the end of the rainbow. So I didn't have it touch the grass. If you're painting this and you don't have the pot in your painting or you choose not to do the pot, you can have the rainbow touch the grass. You can have it, you can have it go in um, touch the middle part of the grass, so wherever you want it to land. Um, but I'm leaving a gap above the horizon line there. And then, so the green, you can choose to do the light olive green or the brilliant yellow green. And um, so to use the full width of the brush for that, and again, you can have your green kind of overlap the yellow a bit if you need it to. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and again wipe it off so that's not too much white and do just a few streaks of white in there to brighten up some areas of that green. For the blue band, I used ultramarine blue. You can use uh, any blue for this if you wanted, if you had a different blue, like phthalo blue or primary blue, but this is the blue that I grabbed. So same thing, load the blue in the color, wipe it off, and do the full width of the brush for your blue band. 
and you can have it slightly overlap that green and you can add a few white streaks in that blue as well. The next color I'm loading with is dioxazine purple and I am going to do the indigo thing on this rainbow. We can't forget about indigo. So I'm actually going to mix the ultramarine blue with the purple. So it's going to make a bluish purple color wipe off the brush. And so this band is going to be kind of thinner because I'm going to have that indigo sort of mesh with my violet color. And so I'm just doing this, it's overlapping that blue slightly, and it's kind of half the, sh the width of the, the brush. So not a full width one, kind of a half width one. And same thing with the dioxazine purple, that one's going to be a half width one as well. Doing the white streaks in there. And I already know that my white, that base sort of... Um, the dry brush thing I did with the white is going to be too wide and in the end of this painting I can show you how to go back over it and cover it up and so um, if you wanted to cover it up now because it's too wide you can always get light blue permanent um, the same color you use for the sky and you can just paint over the leftover white that's still showing through but this one is dioxazine purple not mixed with the blue and again not a full width band kind of a half width band so we have the indigo and violet kind of split in half there and just kind of finishing this rainbow off doing the white streaks in there as well Then I'm going to grab this baby wipe here and um, touch up where that purple kind of went out of the line of that rainbow. So I'm just taking that wet wipe and I'm kind of erasing where it kind of got off out of line. And that's what you can do if you ever mess up. As long as the paint is still wet, it the baby wipe will lift that paint right off so you can see right there where that purple kind of got out of its sort of area it helps it, it's not going to get that white streak off because that's dry already so if you wanted to if yours was too wide like mine if you if you wanted to get rid of that leftover white just mix your light blue permanent again and um, you'll be able to get your sky back and for the reflection it's kind of the same thing, only it's a lot more looser. Um, it's a reflection, so it wouldn't be an exact mirror replica. The colors would be mirrored, but they're not um, as uniform, if that makes sense. They're much looser. So I'm just taking this color and sort of, um, it's still dry brush style, only it kind of, if you wanted to do it kind of watered down, you can. So see how, that, see how bright that was? Um, don't you don't want it that bright so you want to wipe it off right away if it goes on there and it looks super bright it's very dull it's still reflecting in the water but it's very dull um, and we still see a lot of that blue water showing through
with the blue, the purple, and the indigo, I just kind of, kind of um, let it all mesh together in this area. So again, it's just the reflection. It's not as strict as the initial rainbow that we painted in the sky. So what we're going to do next is the cauldron. If you're choosing to do this because it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm just going to take my number four round brush and draw this out here. So we have the lid of our pot and or the rim of it. And that's going to start out by go going all the way around our base of the rainbow. And if you wanted to draw this with chalk or pencil first, you, you can certainly do that. And then we have, it kind of dips down on the left and the right. And then the pot is a rounded shape. So on the left and the right, we have the pot and it's, uh, it's rounded on the sides. And so I'm just using the, the black, the Mars black and the little, the four round brush and I'm just kind of just sketching it out until I form the shape of it and then I can start filling it in once I'm confident with the shape and it's okay that it's sitting there on the roots of the tree that's okay and I'm just just gonna go ahead and paint that in solid black Adding water to that black helps with the flow and um, this is the artist loft Mars black and I always find that this one is really kind of gummy and doesn't flow as much as the basics Mars black. Um, so I always have to add a little bit more water to it to really get it to smooth out better here. And so I'm just making that pot more rounded on the sides and just forming the shape of it. I'm going to go silent here and this pot is just going to keep evolving as I form the shape and fill it in with that black. Ideally, you would want that black to dry before doing these highlights, but I could not wait to put these highlights in, so I took the chance and just did them anyway. Rinsed my brush, grabbed the titanium white, and I did a white streak right there along the rim, and I kind of like how it's blending with that black. It kind of gave it a really cool effect. So that's the rim of the pot with that white, and then I'll do a white curved line over here on the left side, in the lower right part of the pot, we have two little sort of marks. We have one um, sort of larger comma shape mark and a smaller mark. Um, but you can do different variations of the highlight if you wanted it to look different. And I will have to touch this up later because of the way that black blended with that white. So there is our pot and we're going to go ahead and continue on with this. We're going to do the reflection in the water next. So this is probably one of my favorite parts of the painting. The really pretty reflection lines in the water gives it a very nice touch. And so we're gonna go ahead and load some fresh titanium white onto our palette. And I'm gonna be using the number four round brush for this. So starting with the reflection that's over the rainbow, I'm just gonna do these really tiny thin white lines. And they're gonna go right over that rainbow reflection. So it's gonna create the illusion that that rainbow is reflecting in the water. And we have the water texture that's giving the movement in the water there. So I'm just gonna do different sort of length lines. The lines that are um, closer to the bottom are longer and the lines that are closer to the grass are shorter. That'll create some depth, but of course we can have long lines in the back and short lines on the bottom too. 
but I'm going to go ahead and add these water lines all over and I am emphasizing the fact that this area over here in the water, the right side of the rainbow reflection is brighter so that's going to have more white lines than the left. The left is a little bit darker and we'll be doing some um, darker reflections from the trees in that water. To vary the color you can grab some turquoise so if, if your turquoise is still wet you can bl mix that with the white to create a lighter turquoise color or you can freshen up some turquoise on your palette but using that turquoise and the white will give some variation in color so it's not all white reflection we have some um, turquoise reflection as well and you're just going to go ahead and fill the your water area with little white lines and you can do white lines over on the left but there's not going to be as many white lines over on the left So over here on the left, I'm doing more of a turquoise, more of that turquoise color mixed with the white so that it's not, we still want the water texture illusion, but it's not bright and sparkly in that area. This area over on the right is bright and sparkly, so I want to make sure I am emphasizing that area so a whole bunch of bright, super bright white lines. In fact, I will be painting actual little star sparkles in that area because it is very bright and sparkly and pretty and magical sparkling water. So to create that illusion, you would, um, I'm going to rinse my brush off to make sure there's no turquoise on there. And I'm going to make sure that my point is super, super thin. Um, if you need to use a white paint pen for this, you can. You can also use one of those really tiny uh, round brushes for this step, but I'm just gonna paint like a little star, just like I'm painting stars in the sky. So like a little asterisk in the water, and it's gonna make it look like it is sparkling water. And I love the effect this gives in the water. So I'm gonna do a few in that area, that super bright sparkly area that I was talking about over here. Just a few little, sparkles. You can do as many as you want if you really like the effect, but I'll just do a few. And you can see the sort of magical illusion it creates. Super pretty. And then I'm just going to go in in there and add some more water lines. Okay, so we can't forget the fact that the tree most likely would be reflecting some darkness into the water. So I am going to grab that round brush and get some raw umber on that brush. And I'm going to do very, very loose, but long, um, loose horizontal lines in the water. They're going to start out sort of wide on the bottom and get very loose and kind of thinner on the bottom. And so very abstract, we're not, it wouldn't really, I didn't, I didn't want too many details reflecting in there, just that it would kind of make sense that we would have some darker reflection right there. And if you want, you can go in there and add some black right where the pot of gold would be reflecting. So just a few black lines. I didn't want to cover too much of the sparkly rainbow reflection, so I just did a little bit of indication of some black reflection in that area. Next, I will be demonstrating how to do the tree leaves, the leaves in the tree. And I'll be using that number 10 shader brush. That's the brush that I used for the rainbow beams. And then freshen up some hooker's green hue on your palette. So with 
these leaves, I like to take the tip of the brush. There's so, there's a million ways you can do these leaves, but this technique I'm having, I'm demonstrating just dabbing the brush. So I'm just applying the paint to the tip of the brush and I'm just dabbing it to create little bunches of leaves. So I'm doing that on the tips of the branches and I'm not using any other color yet. This is just that dark green. We're going to be layering on brighter colors. So when we do the leaves, we want to start with our darker color and we want to progressively add our lighter colors after we um, applied our darker colors. So I'm doing little bunches, clusters of those leaves, um, just dabbing to um, the tip of the brush and just kind of applying it all throughout in clusters on the tips of all those branches, wherever I would want those leaves to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up these clusters with those that dark green color. Then we're going to go ahead and without rinsing our brush, grab the lighter green. So this is that light olive green color and apply more clusters of green little dabbed strokes. And you, you, we're not trying to cover up our darker green. We're trying to just add another layer. And I apologize for that getting cut up, cut, cut off there at the top. But you'll you'll be able to see it here in just a second. But I'm just dabbing that lighter green over the darker green and creating new areas where that lighter green. So down here, maybe that lighter green would kind of dip down under the branch a bit and kind of point off a little bit. And then... So then you want to gradually get even lighter. So you can grab a little bit of white and mix that white with the, the light olive green and uh, apply more clusters of that color. So now our, we have gradually even lighter um, leaves. So you can see what happens when you start with the darker green and then layer on lighter and lighter. It creates a dimension in your leaves. The leaves would be reflecting different lighter or different tints of that green. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, add the lighter green and you can even add um, another lighter green so you can get the white and add a white color. You probably wouldn't want to do pure white because then it'll look like there's snow in the tree with that pure white but you can do a super light green um, you can even add some yellow into your green if you wanted to do some yellow yellowish green colors but I'm going to just go ahead and kind of finish this off so some of my lighter green would be overlapping the branch as well Next, I'm going to add a different color to my tree. So we have this dark tree with some texture in there, but I want to lighten it up here and I want to add some red into my brown. So I could grab burnt sienna. That's a, a reddish brown, but instead of introducing another color to my large color palette I have already, I'm going to mix some red with a little bit of yellow and the raw umber and a little bit of white. So it's going to make kind of a, a light, medium, reddish brown color. And I'm going to use my number eight round brush. And I'm just going to add more of the texture spiral strokes. The same strokes I did earlier when I lightened it up. So I'm doing these long wavy strokes in, on my tree trunk. They're overlapping each other and creating that texture in the tree. 
And I'm doing it mostly on the right side. So you see those branches? I added that lighter reddish color just on the right side of it so that the left side looks like it's darker. And a little bit of red in there because I really like that red in that tree. And I'm doing that root, that one root that's over on the bottom. And it just kind of curves over. And then the left part of it still remains dark. And then I can add a little bit more white to that color. So you can play around with the colors on your palette and add a little bit of white over there just on the right side. So that's where our light would be hitting that tree on the right. That's why I'm leaving mostly the left part of it um, darker. So but adding that extra layer of white in there kind of adds to the spiral effect in our tree trunk. And I'm just taking that lighter, lighter brown in there and adding it up into the branches over here. The next thing I'm going to do is have some of my grass texture look like it's overlapping our cauldron. So back to that 3 8 inch angle brush. Same exact technique for the grass. This is light olive green. A little bit of white in there. Um, just make sure just to make sure it shows up because that black is um, needs some coverage. So that white is going to allow that grass color to overlap the black if you add a little bit of white into the paint, if that makes sense. So I'm just taking the angle brush and doing little strokes of gray of grass blades to make it look like it's nestled right there in the grass. Then I'm taking this grass and kind of adding more uh, grass right, right here in the distance. I didn't like how that yellow um, or that line on the horizon line could, kind of was too profound. So I just went back and kind of touched that up way in the distance. And the next thing I'm going to demonstrate are the clouds. So if you're simplifying this painting and you don't want to do clouds, clouds are always kind of tricky, especially for beginner painters. Um, but I like the look of the clouds in this, just kind of goes with the theme of the rainbow. But these are very um, sort of abstract clouds. And I'm using the shader brush, so the, the same brush I used for the rainbow, and adding titanium white just to the tip of the brush. And I want to kind of do it dry brush style. So that white should not be super bright. It should be pretty opaque. So you're loading only a little bit of paint on your brush, wiping it off with the towel or wiping it off on the palette. I'm just dabbing the brush, same kind of the same way I created the, the leaves in the tree, just dabbing the brush. And the clouds would be um, very um, not organic shaped clouds like they're not really circles or triangles they're very loose and um, all different so the clouds on the bottom would be smaller and more narrow and thinner the clouds up high would be larger and kind of spread out a little bit more and of course you can kind of vary that and you can go and add more layers on your cloud by adding some brighter whites in there but these are clouds that are very subtle um, Kind of like the cloud, what the way the clouds look like after the rainstorm clears off. It's just some linger, lingering white fluffy clouds. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do this all over the painting. Maybe some would be showing through some of my branches of the tree. If, um, if it's too bright, you can always take your finger and kind of smear it. Um, What's nice about this is the base of our sky was this blue and white combination. So we already have our white streaks in the sky that kind of help let our clouds sort of blend in with the rest of the sky. So that makes, makes it easy to paint these subtle clouds. Now 
I was hoping the clouds would kind of disguise that leftover white streak in there, but I'll show you in just a bit what I did to disguise that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign my name right here with dioxazine purple in the lower left corner of my painting. So I'm using a number four round brush to sign my name, which means my painting tutorial is coming to the conclusion, but I'm still going to show you how to disguise that leftover white streak. And so what you can do is use the, the same color of the sky. So it's light blue permanent and titanium white. And I'm going to slightly water that down, even though I probably should have used fresh water because I have t a tint of green in there, but it wasn't noticeable. But um, that's the shader brush. And I'm just adding that light blue color left and right strokes. And I can use my finger to really kind of get into the areas I want it to. And that is how we can disguise our white leftover white streak. And then you can go back and you can add more clouds. But that is it. This is the conclusion of the rainbow painting. I really enjoy doing this um, really pretty rainbow design. I've been wanting to do a rainbow painting for a while. I just wasn't sure how it was going to look or how it was going to come out. So I'm so glad it evolved into this idea. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.